This is part one of the lectures covering general relativity. In 1905, Einstein publishes Special Relativity. Okay, incidentally, why is it referred to as special relativity? Well, it's called special relativity for the following reason. First of all, it is not called special relativity because it's strange or different or something like that. Instead, it's referred to as special relativity because it only covers a limited case. It only covers inertial reference frames. Now, an inertial reference frame, recall, is a reference frame at a constant velocity. So the word special means it only refers, or covers, if you will, inertial to inertial reference frames. Immediately after publishing the theory in 1905, Einstein then sets out to generalize the theory to include non-inertial reference frames. So after publishing, Einstein sets out to generalize the theory to include non-inertial reference frames. Recall that a non-inertial reference frame is a reference frame that is accelerating. An accelerating reference frame. Einstein initially believes that the process of generalizing the theory to include non-inertial reference frames is going to be relatively easy and it's going to take him a short period of time. The process stretches out for about 10 years. Early on in his investigations, however, in terms of generalizing the theory, Einstein kind of hits upon the direction that he has to go and he does have his eureka moment, if you will, fairly early on. Einstein realizes that in order to generalize the theory of relativity to include non-inertial reference frames, this is going to require a complete revamping of our understanding of the force of gravity. This will require a new understanding of gravity. Okay, now here's a nice easy conceptual example that you can wrap your head around in order to understand, for example, why that is. So consider, for example, the following. Let's say that we have the sun and the earth. Like so. And the sun and the earth here are separated by a distance r and then each of the objects has a mass. Okay, now according to Newtonian gravitation, the magnitude of the force that the sun exerts upon the earth is as follows. G times the mass of the sun times the mass of the earth divided by distance squared. Now imagine a starship racing through the solar system at a relativistic velocity. So right here is a starship, like so. Racing through the solar system at a relativistic speed. And then consider observers on the starship. What would they then see as they moved through the solar system? Well, first of all, they wouldn't see the distance between the sun and the earth as r. They would see that distance as length contracted. In addition to that, they would see relativistic masses associated with the sun and the earth. So then therefore, this then means that this expression right here would be completely wrong according to observers on the starship. In other words, the Newtonian picture of gravity is incomplete. We now have to take gravity into account with relativistic effects. So Einstein realizes that in order to generalize the theory of relativity to include all physical phenomena, 
That is then going to require a complete re-understanding of exactly what is meant by gravity. As I also mentioned a few minutes ago, Einstein early on in his investigations has his Eureka moment. His Eureka moment, if you will, is a very famous Gedanken experiment. This Gedanken experiment is referred to as the principle of equivalence. When Einstein originally published his version of this Gedanken experiment, he did so in the context of an elevator. It's a little bit easier to understand, however, the principle of equivalence if you picture the situation in terms of a rocket ship, and that's what I'm going to do here. So let me go ahead and do some racing. Okay, now we once again kind of like take a trip, if you will, through Einstein's imagination with this Gedanken experiment. Remember that the word Gedanken in German means thought. Okay, once again, this is referred to as the principle of equivalence. Okay, so let's consider the situation in the following way. Okay, let's say right here is the Earth. We'll consider this to be a stationary reference frame O, and then here's an observer. Okay, this is an inertial reference frame. Okay, and then let's say we have a rocket. I'm gonna draw a very poor rendition of a rocket ship here, like so. And then relative to the Earth, let's say that the rocket ship is moving in this direction at constant velocity. So it's still an inertial reference frame. Okay, and then we have an observer on the rocket ship, like so. Let's refer to this observer here as O prime. Okay, now what would be happening to O prime inside of this rocket ship if it was at a constant velocity? Well, very simply, the person would be in free fall. The per person would be in weightlessness conditions. So that person would be just kind of like floating around the room here as I've drawn on this simple diagram. Okay, and now once again, we get to light. Let's say, for example, that we have right here a laser on this wall of the rocket ship, and then directly across the room on the opposite wall, let's say that right here is a target, like so. And then let's say that we fire the laser. What then happens? Well, pretty obviously, as long as the rocket ship is at a constant velocity, the laser will hit the target. Now, I'm just going to draw the situation according to the observer on the rocket ship. This then looks like this. So, however, what would the observer on Earth see? Well, the observer on Earth would see the laser light then trace out a diagonal path like so, and then hit the target when the rocket, for example, is here. And this would then lead to all the understanding of, our, of what we had seen earlier, of time dilation, length contraction, and so on and so forth. So right now, it's actually the exact same Gedanken experiment that I described earlier, in that case, however, it was in the context of a train. In this case, it's just a rocket ship. But for now, it's the exact same Gedanken experiment. But now we're gonna change the situation. Now we're gonna say that the rocket ship fires the engine such that the rocket then accelerates. So let me go ahead and do some racing here. Like so. Okay, and then here's my rocket. Like so. And now let's say we fire the engine such that the rocket accelerates in this direction. Now we'll specifically say that the rocket accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared. And because it is accelerating, now the rocket ship is a non-inertial reference frame. Okay, now what happens to the weightless observer from earlier when the rocket was an inertial reference frame? Well, that weightless observer was originally in free fall. You then fire the rocket's engine, and what happens? Well, the person then just falls to the floor. So here's the person standing on the floor like so. It just feels as if they're standing here in this room, as long as the rocket is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared for simplicity. Okay, once again, here's O prime. So now the observer is just standing on the floor. 
Okay, and then we repeat this little experiment here involving the laser. So for example, let's say right here is the laser, like so. Right here, once again, directly across on the opposite wall is the target. And now you fire the laser. Okay, what then happens? Well, in the short amount of time that it takes the light to cross the room, the rocket is accelerated in this direction. So then therefore, the laser light is gonna hit the opposite wall a little bit below the target. Now this person over here, the stationary observer, that person would just see the laser light once again trace out a straight line, a diagonal path like so. It would just happen to hit, the laser light that is, it would just happen to hit the opposite wall a little bit below the target. But what does the observer O prime see? Well, the observer O prime in this non-inertial reference frame, this accelerating reference frame, sees the light trace out a curved path that looks like this. Like so. So the observer sees the light trace a curved path. Once again, this is according to the non-inertial reference frame. Okay, and now here's kind of the punchline, if you will. Let's say that you're that observer on the rocket ship and you're just standing on the floor watching this happen. And now let's say that there are no windows, so you can't see outside. Let's say you can't hear any engine noise, you can't feel any vibration from the rocket engine or anything like that. Is there any way for you to tell? Now, when I say that phrase, I'm being a little bit specific. What I'm actually saying is, is there any experiment that you can perform? Is there any way for you to tell whether or not you're inside an accelerating rocket we're just standing here on this room, or in this room rather, here on the surface of the earth. No, there's no way to tell. Now you may be saying to yourself, well, wait a second, what if we did this experiment involving the laser light here in this room? Shouldn't the laser light just trace out a straight line and hit the target? No, here in this room, it also traces out a curved path. The situation looks like this. Okay, so now here's the surface of the Earth. And then here's an observer like so, just standing here in this room. And they then follow the laser light. Like so. The laser traces a curved path. This is Einstein's Eureka moment. Einstein realizes that physically there is no difference between acceleration on the top board and here on the bottom board, what we experience as the force of gravity. That's why it's referred to as the principle of equivalence. Okay, let me go ahead and outline this here for you on the board. So there's no way to tell. Once again, specifically what I mean is that there's no experiment that can be performed. There is no way to tell whether the observer is in an accelerating rocket, a non-inertial reference frame, or is just standing on Earth. Both situations, the laser light here traces a curved path. Once again, this means physically, acceleration and gravity are the same. That's why this is referred to as the principle of equivalence. Let me write that here. Physically. Acceleration and gravity are the same. Okay, now as you ponder this, you may be saying to yourself, okay, well, 
Let's say that we do this experiment involving the laser here in this room on the surface of the Earth, and it traces out a curved path. Well, that then merely means that the force of gravity is being exerted upon the light. But light has no mass, and recall that force is mass times acceleration. So then therefore, if light has no mass, this then means that we can no longer consider gravity to be a force. And this is where Einstein truly has his flash of genius. Einstein realizes that the light here, for example, in this Gedanken experiment, is in fact tracing out a straight line, but it's tracing out a straight line through curved space. Let me write that here. Einstein realizes that the light is tracing a straight line through curved space. This right here is Einstein's flash of genius. Let me go ahead and pause this here as part one of today's lectures.